You're listening to the New York Said Podcast. Fear not, my friends. This will be my greatest performance. Brother Juan, what's up, Juan? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, yes, man. Yo, we here. We back. It's 2023. Like what are we that. doing here? Just like that. Just like another that. One. Like another it never one. happened. Like it never happened this whole year. It didn't even happen, we, bro. We, we were just here yesterday. You know. <sighs> How was your year? Let's just get, just, just get right into it. Like, if you could give your year... Let's just say one to one to ten. What would you give it? Oh, uh, this was like a, a fifteen, bro. What? Talk about a fifteen? Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. I mean, that just you know, from the life changing perspective, from professional perspective, from damn, you know, growth perspective, from a roller coaster perspective. There have been ups and downs. There have been in and outs. There have been all types of crossovers. It's, I feel like I'm. You know, everyone feels like they're the protagonist in their movie, and mm-hmm. I don't feel that way. But this year was kind of like, hey, you know, this is going to happen to you and only you, and no one's going to really say, hey, I did this too. It's just kind of like you're going to go through your own journey. So, you know, I became a dad, and that's been, you know, congratulations you know, again. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. It's just it's been a a journey. Obviously, anyone that that you know that understands, you know, these these sensitive relationships especially with you know a baby and and, 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 you know watching for someone's safety and making sure that they 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 make it to another day uh it's a day-by-day course so um i'm learning a lot um i'm hoping to become a better person in the sense of you know living for someone other than just my wife myself our families now it's just this this is an extension of ourselves, right? So yeah. uh, there's a lot more at stake is what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, that, you know, professionally, I feel like, you know, I, I've kind of hit my stride right before taking, uh, you know, a leave of absence just to take care of Jetson. Mm-hmm. And um, it's been a pleasure, man. It's been a, a good time to just kind of uh, breathe at the end of the year and, you know, take care of my my son and, you know, be present for him and, and be uh, more of an equal in the sense of, uh this the the nonstop you know parentage that goes along with it right he just he's about to turn eight months and you know every week is a different week right you're going through these different phases so um that's been the biggest chunk of my year in the sense of of excitement and you know going through the phases you know seeing him for the first time you know what i mean i was in the delivery room uh, so just all these things happen and you just go into the motion of, you know, what the roller coaster looks like. So for me, yeah. it's been that it's also been lost, you know, I lost a few people along the way. Yeah. Um, Same. you know, so it's just, that shit was rough yeah. this year for me. Like that lost part is man, yeah. shit. Like this, Talk about it. I've been around people. They had no idea that like I had just, you know, I, you know, cause I work on the road. So like, I'll go to a gig not know, you know, people, these people don't know that they're being so kind that they're helping me mourn because I'm not talking about it. But I just left the funeral just, you know, a day or two before I got on the road again. You know what I mean? That's true. And, um, you know, when it, when it happens like that, you know, this particular friend, uh, his name was Messiah. And he was just oh, uh, it's like a bless. He was a, he was, um, he was a good, good dude. I just, I don't want to go into super deep like that, but he was just a really, really, really good dude. And he was good. He That's was good. good to my my sister because they were essentially married. Um, he was good to my family. He was good to my nieces. He was good to me. He was good. You know what I'm saying? Like he was just a good person. And so to have like somebody that just genuinely just a good person, just, you know, when it's your time, it's your time. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. that that one, that one, really, I'm still processing that one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah, but like, I, I mean, other things have happened, but yeah, that that when it comes to loss, that that one, that one was heavy, and it was mostly because it was like, damn, yo, that was a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
that whole good die young kind of thing. It was like, and it was yeah. young. He was in his thirties. You know what I'm saying? And it, yeah, it was health. It wasn't like any violence or anything like that. It was just so. It's just right. like what the fuck. So yeah, yeah. man. Um, yeah, I, so I actually not to cut you off, but I, I started the year with that type of a situation. And in fact, I mean, you know, because you and I do the the Sunday cigar, um, you know, this guy was one of those like cigar giants in a sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, the, everyone loved. You know, you know, Sir, this is Sergio Montalfo, who was like, you know, an industry giant and has been in the game for, you know, 30 some odd years. And, you know, just just one of the most beautiful people you would ever meet, man. And uh, he showed me so much love, man. And, um, you know, there's there's still I still have an email like his last email to me was, you know, a complimentary one. So I, I printed it out and I have it in my, in my work, you know, station. And it's just a constant reminder of like, yo, just keep doing the best job possible. You got to. Uh, because this is the outcome. You know what I'm saying? You like got whether to. you're here today and tomorrow or, you know, God forbid you're gone tomorrow. The idea is that, you know, your lasting impression is that, right? So like, um, it, it was definitely uh, the last lesson I had to learn from him. It was kind of like, man, you, you know, I, I don't have you, but at least the last time we communicated, it was uh, a confirmation that I was doing a good job. And, you know, I, I just, I lean on that. But and again, you know, we all lost somebody because he was such a great person, bro. Like just I'm talking about the guy that's dressed up for Halloween every year mm. in a different outfit, the dopest outfit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, amazing, bro. Like, just an amazing person. Left behind an amazing family. And uh, we miss him every day, bro. Like, you know, as a person who, you know, this industry is so small and um, got all these helicopters. Um, nah, it's all good. These, I can hear you. You're good. We have all these people that, like, represent that the wholesomeness of why we love the camaraderie around cigars. Um, Sergio represented the old school, the new school, you know what I'm saying? Every school, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah to lose him was was a, a big... And it was, again, it was a health thing. Uh, but it wasn't like he was in poor health. The guy was, you know, built like a brick shit house, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, that, that, that lost... I started the year because I was at the top of the year uh, right before our trade show. So, um, yeah, bro tough very tough to swallow pause um, but i know he's watching down on us bro like that's just and that's, that's the other thing kind of count on yeah i mean that's the thing we got you know like i look at it as graduation you know what i'm saying like yeah i started thinking about death a lot this year you know like i, I out of sure. the blue started talking to chill well i was like yeah which because you know we and chill well this is my brother i've known this dude for over 40 years you know i've known him since kindergarten so i'm like yo chill Yo, when you die, like, what you want me to do, bro? Like, do you want me to, like, print out your pictures and just, like, be staring at the wall and just crying at your loss? So, like, what do you want to happen? Like, what do you want to happen when you die? Like, do you want me to feel bad? And Because we just talk like that. And he was like, nah, I don't want you to do none of that. He's like, all I want you to know is that you got somebody looking out for you on the other side. Just know that. But I'm, like, I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? I, I got you what? from... Well, if I'm over there, then I then I'm looking out for you oh, from over there. And yeah. I was like, shit. You know. And so that's what we and I, I can feel it, you know, like I can still feel my cousins and grandparents yeah. and old friends and you know, you know, loss is just it's just part of what life is, you know, and you gotta gotta get used to that out the gate. Yeah. Uh, agreed. And especially you know, not to cut you, but especially if no, you are blessed to get older you know it's just part of if you're going to make it another year there's going to be a lot of people that's not you know so you it just kind of prepares you f- un- until it's your time you know what i mean or or there's heavier losses than because not all losses are the same you know but like being alive in itself is just getting getting very familiar with that fact that you are promised one thing and that one thing is to graduate or die or whatever you want to call it 
that's the truth, bro. There's a duality of it, right? That's, you know, again, to be blessed to with another day. I'm always happy to make it another day. Um, and again, you know, understanding that life is fragile and, you know, I might not have the people that I want to have or need to have, uh, you know, due to, you know, life's course. Right. The inevitable course. Right. And, you know, I don't want to make the first one. We're not, we're not even 10 minutes in. We're like, and death. <laughs> like, Morbid. <laughs> but, no, but I think it's, it's, worth, it's, worth, it's worth mentioning because we're yes. human. It's like, you know, yeah. as we get into the fun stuff, we have to kind of just, and I mean, you know, it's, it's, recognize it, what, what it is. And it's the year and wrap up. And it's the, it's the end of the, it's the only episode where we really just get to do whatever the hell we want to do and go wherever we want to go. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I don't, I have no desire to edit this. So it's going to, whatever made it in is going to make it in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter sounds and all. Yeah, yeah. all of that. Like, like. I don't know. How, it's like, I don't know. It's the funniest thing, bro. Like, I promise you, this is not like, I don't know why there's a helicopter. I don't know why. Nah, we can't even hear it like that. It's And it's all good. Okay, cool. East Coast, West Coast, Worldwide. Um, <laughs> it's been a uh, it's been a, a very productive year. I will say that. Like, oh, man. I've yeah, been so. in a I've been in a groove like no other. Oh um, yeah. Oh okay. Modesty. I love it. What What's modest about that? I think that it would be an understatement for you to say that you've done a lot. I think you've done an abundance of things. There's There's a a bag, and then there's like the Santa Claus bag, bro. <laughs> like the the you. It, the spectrum of things that you have presented this year just from a spectator's perspective has been absolutely amazing. So just well, tip my hat there, but I have to start that, right? I have to start off the bat and saying, yo, hold on, wait, a lot. I've done a lot and I haven't done enough. So I know that you've done more than enough. And like, you know, everything from SVA to, you know, all the other projects that you're working on. Um, I just feel like a lot is a lot, but a lot is a lot is a lot. You know what I mean? Like, there's an aspect of, of a lot. Hold up. I, I, you know, let's just jump right into it. That SVA shit, Ooh, the School of Visual him. Arts. Talk to him. I got a, I got, that's, that is probably hands down the biggest accomplishment that I've done this year. Oh, like normally man, we wait, a... normally we, we say, we say these things at the end, but I'm, we, 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 we we're not guaranteed to make it to the end of this episode, right? That's According to it. the beginning of the it. episode. Talk to him. Talk to him. So, ah. I got an email from Julie Graham, I would say like summertime, like August. She was like, okay. hey, I'm headed to London, but before I've been tapped to curate seven speakers to speak for the, I'm going to butcher this, the Masters of Photography um." School of Visual Arts lecture series. I wish you could narrate this part. I wish you could narrate that. Like, <laughs> and so I'm I'm looking at the email like twice. Like, I'm thinking. I, I mean, like Julie has been a guest on the show, and we've done. You know, like we've done. Uh, it was a great episode. If you get a chance to listen, I know you've heard it, but like who I was listening, Julie Graham episode. Um, she's Matt cool with um. Jeanette Beckman and she's a curator like she's and she knows her shit I'm I'm pretty sure we covered it on another year's wrap up yeah please so Julie hit me up and was just like would you be able or interested in being a a lecturer like would you be a guest speaker for the series and you have your day there's going to be seven speakers you'll be number five Mm. you get a whole hour so I'm like hell yeah like what at school of visual arts like so I'm like, bet. So I, I say yes, of course. And so the way my brain works, I'm not slated to speak to like November, like November 7th or some shit. I immediately start working on the presentation days later. So from whatever, let's just say August to October, I'm working on this thing. And I mean, like in the beginning, if anybody has to do any kind of uh, project or an essay or what have you, the best way to do or create anything from scratch is just to create the clay first and then you do the sculpting. And how do you create the clay? You create the clay with a brain dump. 
a sketch, an idea, a bunch of ideas, things you want to talk about, things you want to cover, things you don't want to cover. Let's put it all into one big pile and then you edit it. So like you take everything you've ever, so I was there to tell my story. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to put everything in the pot and then I'm going to remove pieces that don't serve the story or don't help anyone. Right. And so I made this like very long, like two hour presentation and only had an hour, but I knew I was going to edit it down. So I would rather have too much and then edit it down than to sit here and go, how do I make 10 minutes stretch? So right. I went, I said, you know what? I'm going to watch like three or four speakers because I'm number five. So I began to watch them and I was like, I like what this person's doing. I don't like this. I like this. I don't like this. This could be stronger. Well, I'm going to make it stronger in mine. And I just did that. And then I watched a whole bunch online. And then I did like a rough draft. I went up to the school and I was uh, working with the guy there. And um, he gave me some great advice. He said, he said, I did like an hour. I did like a like a quick impromptu 45 minutes just to test to see if my assets work. And he was like, yo, you're about half an hour in and you're still in the 90s. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and the way he said it, I was like, I was like, damn. But he said it so like, like with the best bedside manner, like, like he had been, like he had given critiques for over a decade, which he had. No, no, yeah. So yeah. he knew exactly what to say. And I took it it's and I ran time. with it. Huh? It's your time at the end, right? Like. It's, he's, he's, it's more so an acknowledgement of the time that you're spending yeah. in the story. But what he was saying was like, yo, you're giving you're giving everything top billing. He's like, yo, you right. waited so long to get to some of the stronger stuff. He was just like, you have stuff that's going to get you to the stronger stuff, but everything can't everything can't be can't go. Can't go. So I had gone back in. So at the end of it, I had about like seven versions and then like that day, like one o'clock, I was still editing. Like I woke up mad early, still editing this piece, and then I submitted it. But I had never done anything like that before. I've spoken at several schools. I've spoken at NYU. What? I've spoken at uh, Full Sail. I've spoken at Sullivan. I've spoken at the the New York Film Academy. I've I've spoken places, but I've never done what I did at SVA. I never like spelled it out. I never had um a timeline. I never and even that was abridged that that little presentation. Like that shit could have easily gone on for two hours. But um I never like said, all right, here's my story. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you how I started. And I cut off a whole very I cut off so many things. It's not even funny. But yeah, I imagine so. Yeah, like I had stuff that I did with John Batiste that I didn't put in there. Stuff that I did right. with the Macy with Macy's and the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade that I had shot. Right. Things that I had done for the Pride Parade. Things that a whole basically like two years of me making hundreds of videos in Florida that just didn't make it. I kind of touched on it, but like I could have did a whole presentation on just that. So to be I mean, able to like do that this year was just, it was just like like a cherry on top of of the year to be honest with you. I think I think you know I think Steve would appreciate this. Um, shout out to Steve. Shout out to Steve always. Um, when it comes to Jordan highlights, we could we could watch a three hour film. Yeah. Or we could watch. A twenty-minute film, right? the The idea that you're gonna get from that twenty-minute film, you know, is gonna be the same as you watching the three-hour film. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, like, sometimes the the highlights are so they're so there's such an abundance in the layers that you've created in in everything that you've done and the your road that you've you know you've paid for yourself. Um, where it's more so about the lessons learned than it is about the actual journey. Because at this point, your journey has led you to the point where you're referred to and, and revered as, you know, 
an artist and a creator, right? Now, uh, and a producer. And, and I could go on and on again. Like, we, we've had this conversation, right? So, like, I, I think there's, there's an aspect of being able to shave this presentation down to the finer points that would give the message across, but still not be the entire story per se. Right, right, It'd right. Kind of be a, a a good synopsis in a room full of your peers in the sense of artistic value, or people of uh, of 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 accolades, uh, you know, and, and and people that have their own, uh, you know, artistry that they've mastered. Um, I think that being in the room with the people that were in the room was one part, but I think that the, the shaving down that you did in creating the storyline that you did was, you know, that's kind of how you, 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 you know, you kind of leave a lot unsaid Mm -hmm. because there's a lot to be unsaid, right? There's so much that, Again, you could have gone two more hours and it still wouldn't have been enough, in my opinion, because yeah. there's so much stuff that you and could have covered. The goal was like, at the beginning, I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's been almost 10 years. Next year is going to make 10 years of New York said. Right. I started New York said in 2014. 10 years. 10 years so that means I met you 10 years ago. Yes, like I, I met you. I met you before I even released the book. Fact. You know what I'm saying? I gave you one of the copies before I even started selling it. <laughs> you know what I'm Fact. Like, so it's like, and that's the first thing that sold out. So it's like, Witness. so to meet you at like the point of like where the shit was born, and then to be, you know, the various iterations and and how New York said has evolved, and you know, how many times I either want to pivot, change it do this, do that, give up, uh, whatever. You know, like, if you don't think in 10 years I never wanted to give up on this thing, you're crazy. You know, but because it's so multifaceted, I might want to give up on the podcast and then say, you know what, I'm just going to stick to the photography. And then sometimes I'm like, you know what, I can give a shit about this photography. I really care about these interviews. And then, you know, whatever else it turns into and how and whatever else my mind finds myself but New York said is this playground, the playground of, you know, and it's it's the freedom to be able to do whatever it is you want to do for once, you know. So, like, if That's we want to do cigars on on New York said, then shit, we're going to do cigars. If you want to do photography, if you want to do video, if you want to focus on art, if you want to focus on HIV, if you want to focus on human rights, if you want to focus on social me- social justice or what have you, like, we could go there. You know, no one's telling us, oh, you can't do that. Right. And so that's why I don't, you know, I don't give big hefty, like when the show comes on, the show just comes on. I'm not going to sit here and be like, okay, in today's episode, we're going to talk about blah, 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 blah. I purposely do not do that. I might might give you a little teaser, but really it's just like you push play. If you, if you've been rocking with New York said, you know how we do this. We're just going to jump right in. It ain't yep. really too much. It ain't gonna, I'm not. I'm not moving you with tons of ads or, or throwing tons of ads at you. I don't. Have, I'm not pontificating with somebody for the first ten minutes. I'm. I'm really trying my best to get to it and get in and get out respectfully with whoever it is I'm talking to. I mean, that's the level again that you bring to the game. Um, in that sense, in the sense of 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 bringing the listener to these. Um, great professionals and creatives and artists. And, you know, again, the spectrum is so wide, right? Um, I think that the level of, of, of research and the level of, of, you know, you're always tapped in to, to these things, you know, because it's just in your nature to be tapped in. And then, you know, the universe has rewarded you with, you know, said conversations, um, it's been a pleasure to see, um, you know, how people open up and have these conversations with you, uh, because, you know, you are of value and you bring value. Um, but it's, there's always a part of the conversation where 
they understand that they're talking to someone who, you know, understands what they do, appreciates what they do, and wants to preserve a great conversation with them. Um, that's a good so way to say it, to preserve always, a good conversation. Yeah, I mean, well, you preserve history, too, because I feel like um, a lot of these people don't tell. A lot of these people are used to being asked the same questions. And, you know, it's great when I hear stories of how the origin of how things start. Right. And that's always kind of where the the conversation goes. Right. Like, you know what were you doing before this? Who are you as a person? And those are the questions that we always ask ourselves and we ask about, you know, the people that we, you know, either admire or, you know, we want to follow or, you know, we want to, you know, buy from or whatever it is. Like, yeah, there's always this aspect of like, who are you? Right. And I think that you do a great job of representing uh, those in the know. Right. You are the culture. So, you know, I, I say that, you know, I say that behind your back. I say that in front of you. Uh, but you are the culture, bro, because you bring it. And that's the part where I'm always proud of. Thank um, you. You know, and it's satisfactory to this day, bro. Like, again, we're talking about going into your 10th year. And as the listener, as a viewer, as a spectator, as a helper, as a, a contributor, as a, you know, uh, a team uh, member, co-host, yeah, team member. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, like, it's just you, you just you you continue to. I understand how much you put into the game. I understand how much of yourself you shave off to do these things. Uh, I understand the sacrifices, although you don't really let me in to the to the finite details. Um, I understand how much you're sacrificing for all the, the things that you're doing. So it's not like you're sitting in this in this you know, in this glass house, just kind of like figuring out, oh, what's what I want to do next. It's it's really coming from an innate and uh, a respectful place. So I just, I, I, I always have this admiration for the things that you are working on because you're always putting a lot of deep thought into all these things. Um, so, uh, you know, even when you're talking about a presentation, again, seven versions of a presentation where it comes out and when it comes out, it comes out great. You know, the message is clear, right? Like, you know what you're doing when you're, when you're locked in and you're shaving it down, but it's also part of you. You're shaving away. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, that speech that the, the presentation and speech weren't, you know, representative of your actual work as a whole, that should tell you everything, bro. You know, if, if, if you had enough time and you understood that the audience was, was, you know, was as engaged as they would have been, or, you know, if you could have broken it into segments, you could have, you know, created, you know, three different masterpieces, four different masterpieces, five different masterpieces, a whole week of masterpieces. But, you know, again, time is always the thing that defines what the work looks like. So, yeah. And then it um, gives you the opportunity to like, all right, because, I mean, I got a lot of great feedback. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of great feedback from sure people did, um, who gave me, like, little tidbits and, you know, things. And I was like, all right, okay, cool. And, you know, when it happens again, then, you know, I'm going to – I'll be less nervous. And now that I have this seventh, you know, pre this seventh version, I can begin to build on that. I'm not coming from scratch. I can add things and take things out depending on who it is that I may be talking to. But now moving like forward – um, I won't go in like I'm when I tell you for the last let's say I've been speaking to schools for over 10 years a lot of times it was go up there and just freestyle <laughs> like, I might have some stuff up there but I would just like like what the hell do I need to prepare for like I could just it's my story I know it but for this one what? I was like damn imagine if I would have did this shit like 10 years ago and then right. been refining this but I think it might have taken me 10 years to get to understand from this kind of refinement, you know, and dealing with all and not even dealing, but interacting with all the people that I interact with. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, as you grow, as Steve grows, as all the names and the motley crew of who we are, as we continue to grow, it definitely is still sharp and still. It's my cousin, my family, you know, it's everybody. It's Viceroy Troy. It's fucking jerk face. It's all these things that. 
you can't help but to be smarter for talking to these people. You get what I mean? Right, and then right. you're doing your own work and seeing the 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 trials and errors and the fails, and you're like, huh, okay, not gonna do that anymore. Even with the Zubadashery thing, like the Zubadashery right. is is really just this, like, man, you mean to tell me that I could just make I could just make a character better every time I try to make a character. <laughs> Just make some Listen. shit like today out of the blue. I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna make a bulldog surfing on a shark, and let's just see if I can make it. That was a challenge. <laughs> it was like the equivalent of a Super Mario jump, and then I did one, and I was like, oh shit, okay. And then now I'm gonna write an essay to go along with that, and then that was just over coffee. But to be able to like, I'm not gonna touch that ever again. Like that. That picture, that story is what it is, but it's it's finished. So already getting into the habit of completing things and finishing things with these steroids of AI and people can feel how they want to feel about it. But like if it's in its infancy right now, why wouldn't I want to get on the ground level of what this thing is capable of doing, whether it's going to be the demise of society or whatever? Um it's not like anything I've ever seen before in my life. So I'm like, let me just mess around with this productively and playfully and see what, what the outcome can be while people are either ignoring it, not paying attention to it, but it's still, I'm finishing, I'm publishing, I'm finishing, I'm publishing. And even when I wrote you today earlier, when you were like, I'm trying to keep up with all this shit. And I was like, I'm just trying to learn how to tell a better story. I had a breakthrough like three hours later, changing up various words in the prompt. And I was like, and I got in the, in the story that I, that I produced with it. I was like, holy shit, this is way better than the things that I've been creating for the last two weeks. Right on. No, and, and for me, it's, I'm impressed with your, your ability to create such a pocket, right? Because, Holy what holy. the fuck was that? That was some kind of a firework. Holy, that was loud. Oh, uh, that sounded like a like a um, what you call that? One of them things that exploded back in the days on the block. Maybe. Transformer. Remember when the transformers would explode? Yes. Whew. Let me see. Let me let me see if uh, if Jet woke up, man. Because this. Yeah. Can we pause this? Yeah. Pause, pause. 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 <laughs> All, right, All right. We're good. Sorry about. Nah, man, you ain't gotta apologize for that. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I saw the flash too. Like it, it's like from like, there's ranches out here, right? Like, I'm I'm near, I'm in the valley, right? So like, when when you're going near the mountains, there's ranches and there's a lot of space. So like, you know, cats shoot their guns. So we'll hear some shit coming off. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, sometimes they just blow shit up. I'm like, you just you got space. You're gonna blow stuff up, bro. But, but the, it kind of gets exaggerated. So in this case, <laughs> I saw a flash. And I'm like, "What the fuck was that?" Yo, and I heard that. I was like, "Damn, sound, that shit sounds sound unnatural." Uh, I remember one time okay. when I was a kid, I was on Merrick Boulevard, and in front of Sea Town, this guy was walking with a book bag, and he was—I don't know—he was thought he was a joker, but he was just lighting blockbusters and M80s as he was walking and just throwing them over his shoulder, and he was just That's walking. Crazy. And I was just like, and I was across the street and I was just like, like mortified. Like, what the fuck? It was crazy. And he was just like casually walking, lighting them and throwing them, lighting them. Not even like, not even seeing somebody's around them, just throwing them, oh you know, on like the tin shed. Cause remember back in the days, little supermarkets had the tin shed. Yeah. So sure. like, it, it, then that would just yeah. amplify the explosion. But it was oh just, it was just, yeah, that's Southside Jamaica, Queens. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, yeah, no, so, I Um, but yeah, man, it, you know, like I was, and that's probably an explosion was because I was already like, you know, giving a TED talk or whatever. But, um, yeah, that the range of course <laughs> that that uh that talk was the biggest, not the biggest, but like a very. I haven't done anything like that. Um, so, my man. So as far as like episodes, were there any standout episodes to you this year? Heck yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I'm always a fan of all of them. Um, so you can't go wrong with me. But, uh, but if I had to choose, like, if you gave me 
Top five, top ten. Let's do I'll let's do top, top three. Top three. Oof. Okay. Yeah. Uh I would say my first, my top is gonna be the Erica Ford mm. episode. Shout um, out to Jesse for that. Yo, know, that episode was amazing. Um creatively, um, you know, I appreciate it, you know, her sharing a lot of her journey. Um, I think that there's a lot to be said about, you know, what it means to be human and, and going through a journey, um, you know, and it was just really impressive. So I think what I loved about that episode was that we caught her at a very rare time. Okay. Like I caught her like right before she went to go heal. Wow. Like remember she took three she took three months off. Yep. Um with I believe with Queen of Four. And um she like and she was like sharing her progress for those ninety days. But like nah. I caught her the day before, a couple of days before she was slated to leave. And so that's why she sounds so calm and so in her oh. thoughts and so like when you see her now, you know, she's like in a second wind, she got a whole new life, you know. Right. You know, right after, like, right after she came back from her healing, she's, like, at the Mets game throwing <laughs> throwing baseballs. That's she, beautiful. She, you with Emery and all that, you know. So, like. That's beautiful. So, w- the, what she's saying and where she was in that moment, we got this, we captured and preserved this headspace that she was in that I don't think she'll be in for quite some time because she took the time out that she needed to rest Evolution. and heal and you know all the things to, to get to the next chapter of her achievements when you i think when you're working on helping the world to have a better future especially working with you know the future literally the youth um to me it's a different level of commitment you know that goes for the teachers in the world, the great teachers of the world, right? You know all the guidance counselors that have to deal with, you know, the progressions of of what society looks like, and the things that you have to kind of guide and, and navigate these kids through. Like those are the superheroes, man. Mm-hmm. The nurses at the hospitals, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, those are the superheroes. So, you know, I think that it goes a long way when someone's journey just has that encompassing help factor um i think that you know very few of us go through a journey that's going to sacrifice you know our time and you know again sometimes our sanity you know not to not to say that her case but just saying in general uh we share so much of 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 who we are and helping that sometimes you know we need time to heal like you said so um yeah, man, that was that was her. I mean, again, her journey is amazing, amazing. I would say oh, attached to that, in no order for mine. My one of my first ones would be the um, the the Jaffe Top Tiger. Okay. Um, okay. Mostly, be, mostly because this is a a young man, um, or just a childhood friend, really, the childhood friend of. Um, that I grew up with and to go back home, to go back to the building that I grew up in and just highlight a story from somebody who I grew up with and for them who, you know, he does rap and he does. And I love his music. Like I really do enjoy his albums and I love the music that he puts out genuinely. If I didn't, I wouldn't have highlighted the music. I just would have highlighted his story, right. but I genuinely like what he's, what he creates. And so, um, and he's, I've seen the stuff that he created before he got to this point and the growth from that I've seen. And so for him to share that journey and I feel like if I had to bet a dollar, um, his presence on, on New York said assisted with getting that Erica Ford interview, because when she talks about various individuals who hold the power to, stop violence in the neighborhood he's one of those guys that she mentions um and so to have like an example like have the actual example she's talking about on the show it's not a part two but it's still like she's speaking of people from the neighborhood because she's in the same neighborhood 
Yep. So to be able to um, just go back home and just highlight somebody from the neighborhood who understands, and I understand, um, even though he's younger, he's a lot younger than me. Um, it was a, and it was cool because we just rode around in this car, and we just kicked it. You know what I mean? That's so fun. the way it was produced, and the way we got it, and then on top of that, I was like, "Yeah, you got some pictures because I need some pictures for the site." He was like, "Nah." He's like, he's like, I, he sent me like one or two, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll stop by." So I I went all the way to Queens specifically just to do a photo shoot with him right quick and like a like a five to ten minute thing. And even the photo shoot, I was very happy with. You know what I'm saying? Well, so like everything came, came together. Out dope, yeah, it came out dope. Yeah. No, I, I agree, man. And I, I, again, you know, a lot of these these uh, full circle moments in the sense of who you are and you know, uh, who you were and, and the the life that kind of connects and, and intersects sometimes. Um, it's kind of cool to see that you know, happen for you where you have someone, you know, that you grew up with and you can still say like, yo, you still make great content. Like you still make really good mu- music. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not just, you know, patting you on the back. This is really like, you know, you're nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's different. You yeah. know what I mean? That that love is like, you know, it's, it's a different type of love. So it's cool that you could kind of give him that respect in that sense. And the crazy uh, thing is my my friend who I was talking to uh talking about Messiah who passed away, that's his family. And so well, right even though Jaffe was like, "Nah, man, we could record whenever you want." I still needed to holler at Messiah who was just like, "Don't don't talk to him like he's Jaffe. Talk to him like like the guy you grew up with, like he was like right. coaching me through it, and I was like, "Ah, right, right, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right, you're right," because I do have a tendency to overthink things sometimes. And he was just kind of like in my court, like, "No, no, 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 just that's don't even do no shit like that. Just go in and and that's what happened, you know." Yeah. And um, because of that, I feel like we got a, a richer episode. Um, and then highly my, recommend, highly recommend, highly recommend. My other favorite one was the Destiny Mata. Oh, you um. <laughs> stole, stole mine, bro! Come on, man. Okay, you go. You say your second uh, one. I'll, I'll, I'll move. I'll move my others. Okay, I'll move my others. and I, I mean the reason wow. why I like that one so much is because like I just threw the I have these uh, DJI mics, and so like they're so dope that you don't have to like have any wires, and so I just put a microphone on her, put a microphone on me, and they have their own little hard drives. So I just push record, and I just clapped. And then it synced when I got back to the lab, I just synced it up together. And so like we just walked around LES just kicking it. But I had no idea that it would, you know, explode the way it did. Because uh, we were just kicking it. But the way she the way she expressed herself, the way she but she really, really, really cares about whatever she does. And then from that, we've collaborated further. So it's just like it's dope to have like a conversation go further than a conversation, you know, like yes. she can, yes. she's like pulled me into projects that she's working on. Like um, she's working on a project that she got a grant for, for the LES yearbook. And she was like, um, can you do the interviews? And I was like, Oh, and then she was like, don't worry. Like it's business. So we'll, we'll work out the, the payment. And I was like, word. So you're going to actually Pay me to do the thing that I actually love to do, which is dope because I was always I'm always down to help people. But like I'm always down to do good business. So for it to turn into that and then like we're in the the PJs, like we're truly in like yeah. Baruch houses and um, talking to people and the stories that, I, that we've recorded so far for her project um, for Magnum Photo of all places, which is just insane. Um, beautiful. So like. To, to plant a seed, you know, and then it just blossom into more creative work and more collaboration. Um, it just, that's, that's one of the benefits of working on projects that you're, you're more driven by creating something dope or capturing the culture yeah. or what have you. And you're not driven by bread. You know what I mean? And bread yeah. is good. Like I like bread. I'm not disrespecting bread or business or what have you, but it just, sometimes it just, really it's it's a it's a once in a lifetime thing now that's sounding crazy go ahead Juan you say some things because I'm I'm no no I think you know that bro and again she's very talented um 
I think her episode was one of the episodes that drove me to go on the website and like start looking at like it was more interactive to just kind of understand what her work looked like and because you're so good at uploading and 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 keeping the website as sharp as possible um that was one of those episodes that i'm like oh, what are they talking about i need to see this so you know you're really good at you know making sure that the content that that's being explained in these episodes uh also go up on the website um and that part of it was a lot more interactive because right after the you know right after you know i listened to it as I, as I drive so as soon as i got to the office um i i got on my phone and go what is this oh oh this is fire right like, just right away i'm like whoa like, that crazy shot can't. of like uh her that shot that you took of the one the person yeah, like the within bodega. the bodega like that bodega yeah. shot like i really like i want to somehow make a lot of bread this year and be able to yeah. buy like a like a 24 like a 24 by 36 poster of that like Love it. I want that. The colors, everything's so rich. Everything's so It's my modern. childhood. I've eaten every yeah. single candy in there. You know, the yeah. Nihilators, the Cherry Clan, yeah. the, the Mike and Ikes, the Sour Powers, yes, the Sour Patch Kids, all of that shit uh, um, from back in the days. Beans, Boston Baked awesome. Beans, forget about it. It's awesome. So, yeah. Um, no, I agree. I agree with that. Um, so, yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend anyone that's listening to this episode and hasn't listened to that episode to go listen to that and then to check the website or to do both you can listen to the episode on the website um, shameless plug the other <laughs> one I'll say is um, Render Writer and mostly okay. because I was kicking it with Steve and Steve and I were like trying we went to this like <laughs> super prestigious photography thing <laughs> and like we, okay. we we just we just didn't fit in at all like <laughs> we just <laughs> Like, why, why, why? Because we, it, it was like, it was like this, like, closed off, like, one percenter kind of thing. And it was just like, it was meant to be specifically for, I guess, and it wasn't about race or anything, but it was just like, no. it was like, uh, it was almost like if, if it was a black tie affair and we, and we came in with like 40s and 10s <laughs> and blunt, like, and we were just us. We weren't, you know, we were professionally dressed or whatever. But we just didn't no, right, fit right. in. You know what I'm saying? No, and so, like, the people we would talk to would kind of try to snub us. And I was like, why are people acting funny, Steve? And he was just like, <laughs> they're not used to seeing us in places like this. And I had done it the year before because that's when I, I had got, like, a um, at the same event, I had got, like, a very famous photographer who I didn't even know he was mega famous until, like, after I published it and I, like, was trying to find a picture. I was like, oh, this guy has done interviews with Supreme and all this other stuff. Um, right. but his name was a uh, uh, Joel Peter Witkin. At, at okay. that same event, um, I okay. got that interview, but I didn't put out any. I was like, I don't. There's nothing for us to do here. Like we're not really being received here. And so, like just walking through LES, just kind of killing time. We came across Renda, and I had taken a picture of his the things that he writes. Um, your comfort zone will kill you. And yeah. the first time I saw that was in Miami when I was in Wynwood and I saw wow. it and I was like, holy shit, this is the same dude. You know? And so like that interview um, was a quick and dirty kind of thing. And it was a video and we just did it on the fly. So, love that, it. so, uh, so yeah, that was good. I love it, man. And love uh, it. so what's your third one? Oh man. Um, damn. I mean, did you listen to that Saladin? I have not. Oh, so you in for a treat. <laughs> you uh, are in for a treat. Oh, uh, I've I've been waiting to like just be in this in this space of of having time to just kind of absorb it all. Um I don't know. I'm I'm gonna say it's probably a tie between TDK and Dan Lamb. Oh to be shit. honest. I think that okay. those two have kind of just I listened to both episodes twice. Um and you know, both were a treat for different reasons. Yeah, um, TTK was definitely like another one of those blossomed. Like we did the interview about his show, and then he was like, "Yo, can you come and moderate this Q and A?" It just like a, it just grew from there. But that's beautiful. TTK, he reminds me of someone, and I've known him for years, just online digitally, and then we just recently met. 
in person, you know, and then we've met several times since the interview. But he he reminds me of like one of my childhood friends that I grew up with, even though we just kicked it, you know, because he still has yeah. that that demeanor, that accent, that that you know, ninety three on his voice. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. I think those are the best because you know you kind of you pick up where you left off, and there's no there's nothing rubbing, you know, any. You don't have to worry about the barbed wire. It's just kind of like you speak the same language and it feels familiar. So therefore there's this respect to it. Yeah. Whereas just, there's no, you don't really have to look for too much. Mm-mm. And the Dan um, that's Lamb? That's great, bro. I, Dan Lamb, I mean, man, I mean, to be honest, definitely something that I've, I, I was seeing, like I had seen her work ahead of time. And then, like, to hear the interview and then, like, to again, to go on the website, <laughs> to go on the website and see it um, was definitely one of those moments of, of, you know, this year where I, like, looked at it. I'm like, yo, what? Oh, oh, that's all, oh, man. Because I feel like, especially when, when you're working with actual, like, actual materials, right? Like, I feel like photography and, 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 and painting uh are like one sector of of how i view when you're creating 3d anything that's 3d mm-hmm. uh outside of of it being you know made by a machine uh i'm just i'm always intrigued by you know how the mind works around creating that um and just everything that comes with color and 3d and popping out shapes and one into another like this this I, I just, I'm always intrigued by it. So um, I love the conversation. I think that um, it was one of those, you know, where, again, I'm, I'm learning. So I'm just taking notes and I have to listen to it twice. And I'm like, what? Is, hold on. What is, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Right, right, okay. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I need to see what, I need to almost listen to the to the episode and then go on the website. It's almost like a habit, right? I have to get the auditory and then I got to get it, I got to get the visual. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's kind of how it works. Where I, like once I I get through it and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, that's what she was saying. Okay. So that part of it I think was really cool. Where it's like you you brought something to the table where I didn't expect it, and it was still like so informative, so cool. Uh, and again, I feel like I, I learned a new artist because of that. But I had seen her work, you know, I've seen her work. I just, I didn't know it was her work. Right? Like, I didn't know what was behind the artist. I never, I never thought to ask, like, oh, who makes that? You right. know what I'm saying? Like, who makes those patterns? Like, who makes, who, who's, those who's sculptures. responsible for this? Right. Yeah, the sculptures are amazing. So, I mean, again, bro, like, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, of people that are biting the same lanes out there um, yeah, artistically. Yes. And I think that it's always cool to see the individuals that just kind of set their own, you know, their own way. And I, I think that's the thing that we can kind of pivot into where this gigantic boom of interviews that usually when things become like hypersaturated, which they have, where like, everybody is interviewing everybody like back in the days we had like larry king we had oprah we had studs turkle we had you know we had like a handful of people who were like doing these interviews but now you have like you know kevin hart interviewing jay-z and you have like you have yeah yeah. barbara you have several barbershop episodes you have rappers interviewing rappers you have so it's just like uh when I first started, it really wasn't too many people doing it. And now there's mad people doing it. And yep. then people are telling me like, yeah, well, I want to do an interview. I want to do a podcast. And I'm like, do it. You know, like I'm never going to discourage yep. anybody. But right. for me, it's like the way that I found my lane, especially like when I first started doing the podcast, I was doing, you know, one a week up to about a hundred. Every Tuesday, right. dropping it every Tuesday. And then over time, I just slowed down. And this year is a good example of, like, so many of these episodes just came organically. Where, like, even the right. Saladin um, episode, I was just, I met the brother 
you know, at a, I was in Buffalo. It was by Niagara Falls. And I just heard him talk from a distance when we was working on a project. And I was like, I really need to have a real conversation with this guy. And so like, several of the of this year's episodes just kind of happened in that way and a number of them people reached out to me and i was like sure let's make it happen but a good amount of them just kind of happened over you know in a very organic way and so it's like okay if i am if i am going to continue with my interview series and we're i think i'm we're about at mm, 249 published but there's you Talk know, to him. probably more than Talk that unpublished, you Talk know, like I recorded like a very long episode with Steve and I didn't put it out because it just didn't feel the way that I wanted it to feel, you know, like to record an episode with Steve for me, like whenever it, whenever that comes out, even if I have to record it four times, four different times, when it comes out, it's the one that was like, you know, I've recorded episodes with you, like <laughs> back to back to back. That I haven't come out and then the next one comes out. You know what I'm saying? Um, Because I just, especially when it's one of of the team, I want to make sure that it it shines as bright as it can possibly shine. Um, Because as you know, like Steve has been doing like fantastic street photography. And so like, I want to be able to highlight what Steve does and still tell his story. But I wanted to, to, to shine a certain way. I'm not looking for perfection. It's just a certain way I want to do it. And so um, when it comes to just my voice or the voice of New York said and how things are done um, and how do we stand out, we may not be the most popular show out, but we have long legs. You know, we've been doing it for so long that a good, a lot of times people will reach out and I'm either saying yes or no. So, you know, it the show still yep. goes on, but um, how I cut through all the noise or all the other quote unquote shows is just being consistent by not giving up. Not like consistent, meaning like I put it out every Tuesday, but consistent like, no, I may not work. It may be three months. Nothing comes out. And then all of a sudden five will come out. You know, it's just however I see fit. But um when I do sit down and talk to somebody, um, it's worth your time. Yeah, I think I think the world wants candid information. I think the world wants the behind the scenes stories, right? So that's why you're getting these, these booms. Um, I I feel like um, there's a lot that goes on with. Um, you know, wanting the the stories that haven't been told. Um, and I think that that's what people crave. Um, and I think that's what kind of leads this boom. Um, a lot of these stories that haven't been told about certain eras that were just kind of like under-recorded or things were happening so fast that no one was really like paying attention to record anything. Everyone was just kind of living. Right. And I think that's the area we come from, right? We come from a place from, you know, someone having to have a huge, you know, uh, recording device on their shoulder to now, you know, you can, you can record everything now on your phone, literally, you know, literally. what we're doing now. So, you know, when you look at the progression of things and, and, and the lack of, of, of documentations and, and truth-telling. I think that's what people crave. Um, and I think that's the reason why you're seeing such a heightened uh, aspect of, of those things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I, get, I think a good example of innovation in that is summer of 85. Um, Agree. When you hit me up, and if, the funny thing is, like, I've been seeing some of 85 on Audible. It's been just showing up, showing up, showing up on the feed of suggested listens, and I was just ignoring it. And then when you shot me the text, like, have you have you listened to this? I wasn't going to until I got that I got that text from you. And so I checked it out. And what they did with that production was just insane. From the music to the Great. sound effects to the you know the host like it was just absolutely incredible 
I agree. I, I think that when you look at a lot of the the stories that we heard, um, you know, when those when the storytelling starts, you're always kind of skeptical. Like, okay, what is, what are you telling me? And then when when you link the the huge worlds together, uh, and you didn't know that certain things were connected, um, it just kind of it humbles you a little bit. That's how I felt. At least it's kind of like you know the impact of, of politics, the impact of of you know how easy it is to to be erased from history. Um, it's it's such a deep thing, right? We're human and we feel these things. Um, so like, there's an aspect of 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 putting yourselves in these people's shoes and, you know, having the sympathy and empathy to just kind of like, wow, this happened. And, you know, it's not really covered. We don't really talk about it. We mm-hmm. just kind of, you know, we sweep it under the rug like everything else. So it's, it was interesting to see an in-depth or listen to an in-depth um, coverage of it and just have the high production value of it. But just like, this, this, this is not too long ago. This is literally in our lifetime. So, right. Uh, it's just a, it's it's amazing to to just kind of like we've gone a long way we've come a long way but we haven't really like we really haven't and just it goes to show this this, this happened literally yesterday but it also happened you know almost forty years ago so those are the things that you know I think that kind of the parallels that we're living in right like things happened forty years ago but forty years ago wasn't a long time ago no but what you know, what is the long time ago, right? Like, what do we count as a long time ago? So that's the part where it's like, how long does it take for something to to be uh, repaired, for the damage of something to, to, to be repaired? And, you know, sometimes the answer is just being documented is, is part of it, but it's not everything. Right. If you haven't listened to that Summer of 85, I highly recommend it. Um. Because I, I, in my mind, I thought it was like a hip hop thing, and you know everything has been you know fifty years of hip hop, and I've gotten my share of just diving into a good amount of it, but that was a nice, beautiful like side. I was like sidelined, like holy shit! So this is deeper than that. Okay, um, so yeah, what are some? Um, just give me like one or two books that you really enjoyed this year. Just one or two. Just one or two. <laughs> um, man, I, I enjoyed a few books. Um, my favorite top, top, top book. Man, uh, probably the Genghis Khan. Uh, Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World. Mm. That's by uh, damn, what is it? Jack, Jack Weatherford. Mm-hmm. Weatherford. Jack, Jack Weatherford, yeah. Yeah, I should have taken notes. I didn't really take notes. No, 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 it's all um, good. I think Jack Weatherford. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's Jack Weatherford. Um, yeah, bro. Uh, there's again, it's it depends on who you talk to, right? Because just the way that we look at every other culture that's been erased is always an ulterior motive. So the, it's called the secret. It's really like the secret history of the Mongols, right? The idea that. Because this, this, these people were so powerful at one point in history that their ancestors, it was pretty much an illegal, illegal once the modern world came about, right, where all these countries are coming about in, in, the, in the Eastern world and they're being cut out of the Mongolian sphere and, and, and all that, right, the Bolshevik uh, Empire, the Ottoman Empire, all these, these areas that these people conquered once upon a time their ancestors got pretty much toast. Like they pretty much got erased from history, right? All the power that they had, they didn't build any temples. They weren't, they weren't tied, you know, they were nomads, right? So the, the idea of, of having a capital was just about having the amenities there, but those amenities were just, you know, material things versus building, you know, building actual buildings. They were, they were in a society of building actual buildings. So it's just, it's, it's a very interesting thing. To, to hear a history go from the beginning all the way to the end and then understand it from a modern standpoint where it's like, yeah, I can understand why if you occupy that space, you wouldn't want, you know, the ancestors of such and such, you know, the same way that it happens in the United States of America for Native people, right? Like, no, you can't have that because it doesn't belong to you. Well, 
and actually belongs to my grandfather. Like I have, I have proof. Oh, your proof means shit. So it's kind of like one of those. Um, so it kind of brings this this arc of like some people don't believe it because it's too easy to just kind of say, oh, you know, they didn't build anything. Um, so it's just interesting to hear that conversation, and uh, it goes along with like epilogues in it. Um, but it's a beautiful story, and it's kind of uh, it, it's an interesting story in how things change over time, and your your ancestors want one thing, and you you know what you want in the newer generation changes. So that's you know it's kind of like what happens when you know, two generations, three generations, four generations removed, they no longer want the same things. And there's conflict within. Like, you know, my I don't trust my uncles. I don't trust, trust my cousins. Like, what happens, right? So it changes the course of history. And that's what you, you know, I kind of got out of that. And it was an amazing story. So highly, highly recommend. I just added it to my uh, queue on Audible. Yeah, bro. Yes, sir. Genghis Khan and the making of the modern world. The book that uh, I'm, I'm actually still listening to this book right now, it is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Oh, okay. Um, and she made, uh, what's that? She wrote uh, Eat, Sleep, Pray, or... Um, yeah, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Eat, Pray, Love. Eat, Pray, Love. And But this particular book is about creativity and okay. how ideas are generated and like how things are approached and... The things that she's saying in this book is just absolutely incredible. Um, I'm not, I'm almost done with it, but it, I'm taking my time with it. I, I highly recommend it if you if you're a creative of any kind. Um, yeah, it's called Big Magic, and I've seen it before. It's it's got like a really wonderful cover, but the way she talks about how to make things happen in the process, and even how. You know, she said she just been writing and writing, and one of and then one of her books just happened to blow up. But if it, if it didn't, she was already she already committed herself to be a writer for the rest of her life, regardless of what. So I mean, highly recommend it. And then my second book is the Tetris Effect, mostly because yeah. the Tetris Effect. The Tetris Effect. Yeah, um, it's basically the the backstory of how tetris became uh a household name and all the things like if you watch the movie which is i really enjoyed it it's on apple um you would never think that all these things had to happen from several different people from russia to japan to here like so many things had to happen in order for it just to make it to uh the game boy back in the days and I mean, I'm one of those people who I have, I have a, on Amazon, I spent $13 on this little like pocket Tetris device. $13? $13. But I have, money, Papa. I have that, I have Tetris on the DS that I got like 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, 2009. <laughs> I have that. And then uh, a friend of mine sent me a, a um, Nintendo Switch over the pandemic. And I downloaded whatever that latest, that new Tetris game, which is insane, by the way. Um, so I'll play hours and hours of Tetris, mostly just to clear my head. Um, so to read the backstory of how this game came to be, um, it's just, you know, it was just very moving. My man. My man. Um, I, I, I mean, Tetris is such a... It's such a cultural game. It's it's more than a game. It's like it's it's almost like therapy sometimes. It is. You know what I mean? like, and it goes into there. that. Yeah. Right on. Okay. It goes That's into awesome. like like the positive impact it has on PS uh, PTSD and other things and um. But it's it's like you get into this like creative zone, and I think I had like a very very stressful day a couple of weeks ago. And in this game, you can get like up to like 20 different, like, you know how you get a Tetris that's four lines and you can get like up to 20 or something like that. Um, And I got like 17, which is something that's almost impossible to do. And I didn't, and I wasn't even trying. I was just, just in this zone and I just happened to do it. And so it was just like, 
I, I've definitely gotten really good. So like if I have like, like if I meet somebody and then like I'm, I get busy, it's almost like if somebody tells you they, they, they play 2k really good or if they play basketball really good. You're like, word, let's like, I'm ready to get like, let's find out. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No, no. Everybody plays ball until you put a ball in the front. Right. And, so, the jump shot looks crazy. The dribbling looks crazy. You're like, oh, no, no. all right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I get it. Um, no, hundred percent. But you know, other than that, man, it's been a good year. Like, I I don't really have any complaints. I know, just like we were saying earlier, like it had its ups, it had its downs, but here we are still. You know, we have yeah. the privilege of having another tomorrow. You know, Lord willing. That's it, bro. Thank God, bro. Thank the Lord. Um, so do you have any last words before we get out of here? Hey man, it's been a good year. Um, again, ups and downs. Just, you know, I'm appreciative of just being here. Uh, you know, I've I've I'm I'm proud of you, man. I just wanna, you know, make sure that I say that out loud again. Um uh, it's been great. I appreciate to, that. To, hey man, it's been I really great do. To, to, to to be along for the ride and you know i appreciate you know your insight and allowing me to to peek behind the curtain curtain every so often um you know it, it means a lot to me and it doesn't i don't take it for granted um but it's it's great bro i just i feel like again you know us closing out the year feels right um even to be able to do this feels right you know what i mean it yeah i think like, that we've been doing know, this is probably like <laughs> I don't know, year six or seven or five or six. Something like that. It has to be up there. It has to be at least five, six. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, and I and I also want to say thank you for your constant support and um, your patience because there's so many hey, times where I'm just like, yeah, we got to we got to do it one more time. We got to do it over. Like, even this is our third take <laughs> on this because I just wanted like, to make sure we got it right. You know what I mean? And always, always. even when we did like the the we did the one on one episode. We recorded three episodes back to back and I was just like, can't do it. And then we went and got some food and we came back and did it again. And (laughs) and then we nailed it. You know what I'm saying? And that doesn't always happen, but like whenever we're working on things or whatever, whenever we're collaborating, whether it's year end wrap ups or Sunday cigar or all those things, um, you know, I don't think New York said is just a singular thing. Like, yeah, I may be spearheading it, but without people with all the names we always name um, who are part of it. And it seems to grow um, over the years in yeah. the last 10 years. I'm, I'm really grateful that to watch. this thing is continuing to grow. And so yeah. what New York said will be next year. If I've learned anything is just to, to get out of its way and let it do what it does. And that sounds That's right, baby. En- encrypted or cliche, but when I first started, I, I had all these expectations and I was like, it's got to do this and we got to, right. you know, become number one on iTunes and we got to do this. And then after a while, you're just like, none of that shit happened. <laughs> you know, like, are we going to, but are you going to still keep going? Um, right. And there are people who are listening. And so for everyone who's been listening, whether you signed on just now or you've been listening since day one and anything in between, like, I'm grateful for your support um friends family strangers whatever like it 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 i'm i'm very thankful for it i don't i don't take it lightly my god my god and again you know it's 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 great to to want to see the the you know the evolution of what happens next so you know just like everybody else i sit back and i wait for you know whatever you have cooking next um, so it's, it's, that's the part where it's exciting, man. I feel like you have a good way of, of keeping the audience on its toes and it's never redundant. So I'm always looking forward to it. You know what I mean? Even like, bro, again, you mentioned Zuber Dashery earlier. You mentioned what I said, but like, for real, it's, 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 you know, what you're doing is so vast that it's not, you know, it's not just words. Like there's such an art to how you're presenting it that, even if it's just words, I'm taking my time to read each one. You wow. know what I'm saying? Because it's, each one is unique. No one else has done it. So you for know me, what? It's, it's that part. I do want to say about Zubadashery is that Zubadashery is this perpetual 
game of what if. Right. Like, and sometimes it's like I create Use your imagination. Yes, it's fully using your imagination. Like sometimes I'll create like the other day I created this this dog and he looked like he looked old and, and like he had been here for a hundred years. And so I was right. like, what if this dog had the ability to continue to be immortal and kill itself and it just didn't want to be a baby again? So it's just like I'm right. just gonna let my body rot and just do whatever. Right. So like that idea where you're just like, how do I just feed these ideas of this storyline into this software? And then it spit out something and I'm like, no, move this over here. Do that. Delete this. Rewrite it. And I'm doing it in real time. It is right. insane to be able to like almost in a very scary way to sometimes make a like a 150 word story and it it makes right. an impact and then sometimes go on a full length like there's a whole medium account that i've created that has about almost 50 stories you gotta carve it down <laughs> Start your life bro yeah you so like one of my like shining achievements of zubadashri right now is called one puppet party okay and one puppet party is a it it was inspired by all the times that I was the only black dude at a frat party in Mississippi. And wow. so I was like, how do I jokingly have fun with this concept of creating this expose of these individuals who are inviting one puppet to the party and they're wow. having, and it's become this, you know, this problem in society where like these people keep having these one puppet parties. And so I, I made up all these environments where like in a photorealistic way, a Muppet surrounded by all these humans. So it wasn't just like a black or white thing. It was like all nationalities that weren't puppets, but this one puppet yeah. is in this environment. And so like you can, you can read the, you can read the, uh, the expose, but you can also see the imagery that goes along with, with it that gives you both the, the literary, the literary aspect of it and the visual to feed one okay. another. And so like I did that one time, but I haven't been able to do it again. And so like, I'm like, all right, how do I like, what is the, what is, what is the proper story structure? So like you can read various, you know, writing frameworks and you can read, you know, um, what is that? What is this? like the hero's journey and all those things? There's there's several of them, but because I'm in the journey of like, what does it mean to tell a good story? I'm in the research that I'm doing and the content, not even content, just the art that I'm creating. Because to me, Zubadashi is just art. The writing is an art. The creating the stuff, even though I'm utilizing AI, there's still a, there's still an art and a curation to it. And what yep. I'm making is still sending me on this path to study what it means to tell a story. And so yep. it's causing me to read more. It's causing me to stay in practice. And then because of that, my ability to communicate in the real world outside of Zubadashri has become stronger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well said. And also that's, that's part of why I like reading all this stuff, right? Like I think that from, an imaginary standpoint, it's always cool to um, to understand the flex. Uh, for me, the flex is when someone uses words to create an image, and the image that I create in my mind is not going to be the same as your mind, right? Even if we're writing reading the same words, right? So, I think that's the part where it's magic, um, and everyone creates an individual story in their minds, um, even if the story is the same we're reading the same exact words what we're picturing in our minds is different right until we put it on on paper in front of each other we won't really understand what that looks like so for me it's it's that's the beauty of it and that's why i you know no matter what tools you're using i appreciate um the storytelling part of it and i've been i'm engaged i there's just so fucking much <laughs> excuse my french no fuck it but <laughs> Because it's because as I'm sometimes I'm getting the ideas in my dreams, like I'm waking up out of my sleep to create Zubadasheries. Right. 
which is and then what's getting scary is that like the visuals that I'm able to create are getting stronger and stronger because mid journey from 5.2 to now six zero is insane. Right. Like I made the leaps, the leap before I got on this call with you, I made some very, very, very stylish Sphinx bald cats Ooh. with tattoos on their faces Oh boy. And they just <laughs> they, they just look gorgeous, like in these like phenomenal tailored suits. All the things that I told it to do. When I told it to do that in 5.2, it was like, wow, that's cool. In 6.0, I feel like I can reach into my phone and touch the motherfucker. Like it it looks right. like you like you can feel the fabric, the texture of everything is just yeah. so and then to be able to see what Chat GPT4 is doing, so marrying both of these things where I'm like yep. having an idea of whatever that idea is. And now instead of just being like, you know what? That would have been cool. It's published. It's done. Like right. the idea is complete. And if I ever want to revisit it, whatever that might be, whether it's a zine or a poster or right. a book or what have you. um, Because like right now, everybody's just like, however they feel about AI is how they feel. But there's right. going to come a point where, like, the same way everyone's jumped on interviews or podcasts or photography or whatever that creative thing is, when the market becomes oversaturated um, in the AI space, whether it happens overnight or it's it's forced upon you because whether people want to acknowledge it or not, AI has I'm been on your phone problem. for years. AI has yeah. been in, in cameras for years. Like, when you say auto, you say, oh, I have autofocus that's ai yeah. you know all that stuff all is already filters, existing shit, so right. to be able to do it where it's just like someone was asking me like well aren't you afraid that it's going to take your jobs i'm like i'm not afraid of the inevitable like it, right. if it's going to take my job then it's going to take my job it's just that's just what it is it's just if i was a renaissance painter and the, and the photograph came into play like yeah i would be a little bit salty but at this point, I have the choice to be like, well, let me go see what that's about. Instead of me being like, no, photography is the only way to make a photo. Right. Like I can make an incredible, compelling photo from my phone or from my computer without leaving the house when I've already put hundreds, if not thousands of hours in the field with my cameras. Plural. Right. Several types right. of cameras. But now if I want to show a dinosaur and a and a and a hoodie and some boxing gloves or a bear and some boxing gloves in a cemetery right. <laughs> then that's what I'm going to do right <laughs> that's the freedom of the playground that's the freedom of the playground so like as a creative like this is the one of the very few times where like like a couple of days ago I was with my family they wanted to play pictionary they're like okay Mr. Artist I'm drawing the most atrocious things. And I'm like, I, you gave me a whiteboard and some markers. Like, yeah, I guess if you gave me some time, I could draw whatever you want. But on the fly and 60 seconds, I'm going to draw something horrible. But right. this isn't a reflection of what I am as a creative. That is correct. But now if you was to say, okay, do Pictionary with AI and you would have those same, you know, those same prompts when somebody's like, okay, make these people say this statement, but you have to just create the image in AI. That would be a whole different type of game. Oh yeah. You get what I mean? So I um, I'm, I'm very excited to where it's going. Like whether it's to our demise or whether it's to society's solving problems with it. I just, like, was announced and I'll stop talking someone was basically saying like <laughs> the technology itself isn't the bad part. It's man. Yeah. Of course. You know, and I know there's really an article that, with it. yeah, they're trying to say, I mean, they're not saying someone, there's an article going around that. Like one of the robots hurt at Tesla attacked one of the engineers. And that might be the case. And T2 might be upon us. I don't know. But until then it's Zuba Dashery. <laughs> 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 So, you know, and to come up with the name Zubadashery was just like, how do you come up with something made up and give it life? 
because people don't know what a zubidashery is until it's defined and the way it's going to be defined is the same way New York said was defined over 10 years. And awesome. I may be trying to define, you know, New York said, but after a while I stopped defining it and then it started to define itself. Awesome. And things that fit, fit, and things that didn't fit according to the curation of the project Get itself. Get the fuck out of there. You get what I mean? So, um, And we'll we'll wrap it here. How about that? Oh. Uh. Talk to him. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I, as far as New York said being such a, a, a production house, again, to bring it to a close, um, the fact that you are in control and it's been uh, a fun journey to, uh, again, to see another year of creativeness, of, you know, everything being poured out from your brain, from your heart, you know, it's it's just been a pleasure to watch, and you know, I'm I'm grateful to be along for the ride. So, you know, continue to 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 do the work, continue to put in the hours, continue to be as observant as you are, continue to, you know, continue to explore and elevate. And I think that the sky and the stars are the limit, and there are no limits. Um, but it's just I, again, I just want to reiterate that I am. Happy to be on this journey with you because, again, these are the things that I look forward to and these conversations that I look forward to. Um, yeah. Thank you, my brother. Let's continue to make it happen. Hey, let's do it. All right. To another peace year. Out. Peace. You going to say peace? Peace. <laughs>